Hello, in this video I'm going to demonstrate how I edit the slide that I scanned in the, in the previous video into the final finished image. I'm going to be using the Photoshop to do this. This is actually quite an old version of Photoshop, um, I think it's CS5. I believe this was the last version you could actually buy on disk. I think now you have to, um, it's all digital download and you have to Rather than buying it outright, you have to pay a, rent, a, a monthly fee for it. I think, not not entirely sure, but I think that's the situation now. But even though it's quite an old program, it does everything that I need. I've got all the tools that I'm going to be using laid out on the screen, so I can get easy access to them. On the left hand side, this is the tool palette, and you have various panes on this side. You can add, delete, or move these panes around as necessary, but these are the ones that I find most useful, that I use the most, so I just tend to leave this layout as a kind of standard layout that I always go back to. Right, I'm going to start editing the image now. The first thing I'm going to do is change it from a 16-bit image to an 8-bit. You can also see this is an RGB file. I would recommend you leave it as an RGB. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is assign a colour profile. This is in Edit, Assign Profile. You see I've got a drop down menu here. There's lots of different options, but the one I always go back to is RGB 1998. This is kind of regarded as an industry standard. So you want to do this before you go into it, any other sort of editing because it does actually change the image quite a bit when you change the profile. So you want to do this first. I did actually work for a few years in the printing industry and RGB 1998 was always considered the industry standard. So that's the one I always use. It's always a good idea if you've got a lot of Im images to always use the same colour profile. It doesn't really matter whether it's a scanned image or a digital image, you want to use a consistent profile across all of them so you get a consistent look to your images. Okay, press OK to that. Now I'm going to go into the image menu and select adjustments. There's various options you can use in here. For the initial stage of editing, these ones at the top are the most useful. It's up to you which one you use, but I find levels is probably the easiest to use at this stage. But you, this brings up a histogram where you can adjust the, the exposure and the brightness and the contrast. Okay, to that. There are also these um, auto outcomes we can, can try out just to see what effect it has on the image. So you've got auto tone, all color, and auto contrast. They're just worth trying to see what effect it has on the image, see if it improves it. If you don't like the change you've made, you can go into the history palette and just move this slider up and it undoes the changes one by one. Okay, now I'm going to crop the image. This is the uh, crop tool. Get rid of this rebate around the side. Enlarge it a little bit. 
think the image looks fairly straight. If you've got a wonky horizon or something, you can grab the side of the uh, tool, just move it slightly. Your guidelines here, you, you can, uh, there's not a very clear horizon here, but if you've got a clear horizon, you can use this guide to get it straight. If you're happy with the crop, you click in the middle and it'll crop the image. We're now going to change the image resolution. We go image, image size. You see at the moment the resolution is 4000, which is the, uh, the resolution that we scan the image. You see the pixels dimensions are 56.6. I don't want to resample the image, so I'm going to uncheck this box. I'm going to change this to 300. As you can see, that's changed this the size of the image, but the pixel dimensions have remained the same, which is what you want. Now, I've changed it to 300 because this is the kind of resolution that you want if you're, if you're printing the image. This is kind of regarded as industry standard for a high resolution image, certainly in the printing industry. Certainly it was when I was working in it anyway. Things may have changed since then, but I still regard this as kind of a resolution of 300 pixels per inch. So in my day we called it uh, dots per inch. But pixels per inch, 300 pixels per inch is kind of what you want to aim for. Now if you're publishing this image to the web you want to use a much lower resolution. Generally the standard resolution for that is 72 pixels per inch. But you can see you get much bigger. You want to, if you was going to do that you want to resize the image to much smaller. 72 ppi and 300 ppi are kind of the standard values that you'd use for most images. If it's high resolution, 300 is good. If you want a low resolution for printing, for uh, publishing on a website, say something like Flickr or something like that, you'd use 72. But this is, as this is going to be the kind of master image, we we'll lose it. Leave it at 300 for now. I just click OK to that. I'm now going to start cleaning up some of the uh, bits of dust and other blemishes that you can see on the image, especially in the sky area up here. And there's basically tool, two tools you can use for this. There's the spot healing brush here, which looks like a, a plaster. Or there's a clone stamp here. And the spot healing brush, if I select that first, you can change the size. In this menu here, I'm going to make it slightly larger, so around 50. Now I'm going to enlarge the image. Now, basically, all you do is place the spot healing brush over the over the spot or the blemish. Click, and it gets rid of it. fine using this in areas where there isn't very much detail such as the sky but you can't it's not really suitable for getting rid of dust or spots in say an area like this where there's lots of detail the clone stamp is much better for that and the other tool you can use for cleaning up the image is the clone stamp which is here we've got a menu up here where you can change the size of the brush that you're using you will go, also got the opacity, which I'm going to set to 100. The flow you want to leave to 100. Now with the clone stamp, you need to select 
an area that you're going to clone and that will copy it into another area and to do that you need to use the alt key on the keyboard you get this little target and select the clean area that you're going to copy and that will clone it onto the another area and you can basically paint out all the uh, all these marks and get rid of them that way this is probably a quicker way of cleaning up the image than, the, than what I was doing previously I mean, spot healing brush is useful but when you've got big areas like this uh, the clone stamp is probably a, a more useful tool it's much quicker is looking cleaner already but there's a section here that I want to tackle you got a hair which is oh, that's too much she's intersected with these trees and areas like this you need to uh, zoom in and use quite a small brush I'm going to reduce the size of this 24 use it a bit more So let's go rid of the hair without destroying any of the detail in this area. Which is kind of what you want what you want. I'm just gonna crop this little top view up a bit of the film read bit up here, so I'm just gonna crop that slightly. As you can see, the image looks a little bit flat at the moment, especially in these shadow areas. I'd like this to be uh, a lot darker. So, what I'm going to use is this burn tool. You've got a burn and a dodge tool, plus a sponge tool, which I very rarely use, but these two tools are very useful. I'm going to select the burn tool. You've got a menu up here, we can select the shadows, mid tones, off highlights. As it's the shadows, I want to darken, I'm going to select shadows, exposure. You want to use quite a, a low number to start off with. You want to use a quite low number to start off with, but if this doesn't do the trick, you can always increase it and have another go. Also, you can change the brush size. Yeah, stick with the 300 for the moment. As you go over it, you'll see this will darken these shadow areas. Now, if any of you did any black and white darkroom stuff, you'll be uh, familiar with dodging and burning. It's quite a, an art form in the uh, traditional black and white darkroom. See that's bringing a lot more definition to those shadow areas. Increase the brush size up to 500. 
darkness finished down a bit. I'm going to use a dodge tool, it's like mid tones just to lighten the front of the logo up a little bit. Just gonna just the brightness just to make the image a little bit brighter without but while keeping the shadow areas I think that's more or less there. There's one last subject I want to cover, and that's saving images as different file types and different resolutions. As this is a TIFF file, I'm going to save this as my master file for archiving, which I can always go back to. If, for example, I wanted to send this to a magazine for possible publication, I was going to send it by, by an email attachment or something. I'd want a much smaller file because this is quite a big. TIFF files are quite big. So I'd save a version as a JPEG. But to do that is quite easy. Save as. And choose the location where you're going to save it. I'll just save it in this temp folder for now. Change the file type from TIFF to JPEG. And there's lots of other file types in here. That you can use but realistically the only two you're going to be using on a regular basis is either TIFF or JPEG. So I'm going to use JPEG on this occasion. Click save. You'll get this dialog box come up and it's uh, a different quality settings which changes the file size. So if you're low it comes down to 1.2 megabytes. A medium, slightly bigger file size, high, bigger again, 
the maximum. Now he says maximum at 10, but actually the maximum is 12. So if you and then change it to 12, you can get a much bigger file size with very little compression. But I think if I was going to email this, I'd set it at 10. It gives you a fair, a fair amount of compression and a reasonably small. This is the file size when it's opened. The actual file itself could be actually much smaller. But 10 gives you a reasonably small, small file size without much loss. We were at very much loss of uh, quality. And okay. Now if I was going to upload this image to the web, say to a Flickr site or something like that, I'd want to resize it to make it much smaller and also lower the resolution. So I'll go to image, image size. When I resample the image size, I'm going to leave that checked. Strain proportions you want to leave that checked and scale sizes so that keeps the image in the correct proportion, it doesn't get distorted when you change it. So it basically locks these two together. Change the resolution to 72, and I'm going to change the width to 1024 pixels. That will give you pretty much a full size image on a standard kind of laptop screen. You've got different options down here. You smooth gradients or sharper. As this is a scan image, I'm going to choose sharp because that will slightly sharpen up the image when it reduces it. And you see the file size but it has been massively reduced here as well. Click OK. And now you've got an image that on the, on the screen looks perfectly fine and sharp with lots of detail but as a massively really reduced file size so it's ideal for up uploading to uh, websites and anywhere on the web really again save as and if save it in the same temp folder I'll have to rename it so it doesn't get re replaced the other one save so you get the same dialog box come up and I'll leave it then. But you can see the file size is very much smaller. Okay. Well, thanks for watching. If there's anything else you want to know or any questions you have, please leave them in the comments below. And uh, if this video is successful, I might do some more. So let me know.